When we use numerical integration to discretize a continuous time controller, we in effect define a mapping of poles and zeros from the S-plane to the Z-plane. In today's video, we investigate the mappings defined by the three numerical integration rules we considered in a previous video. We have previously considered three numerical integration rules for discretization of a continuous time controller. The forward rectangular rule, the backward rectangular rule and the bilinear transform. Let's now look at the mapping defined by each of these rules in turn. When using the forward rectangular rule, we replace every occurrence of S in the transfer function of the continuous controller with Z minus 1 over T, where T is the sampling period. After rearranging things, we equivalently get Z equal to 1 plus ST, which defines the mapping from the S plane to the Z plane. Let's look at where the stable region of the S plane maps to in the Z plane. The boundary between the stable and unstable regions in the S-plane is the imaginary axis, which is given by S equal to J omega. When we insert this into the equation describing the mapping, we get this equation, which has a real part of 1 and imaginary part of J omega t. This boundary between the stable and unstable regions is then mapped to this vertical line going through Z equal to 1. The stable region is mapped to the left-hand side and the unstable region is mapped to the right-hand side. We have previously seen that the stable region of the S-plane is the interior of the unit circle, which means that stable poles in the S-plane can possibly be mapped to unstable poles in the Z-plane. Of course, this does not necessarily mean that the closed-loop system will be unstable, but one has to carefully look at the stability of the closed-loop system when using the forward rectangular rule for discretization. When we use the backward rectangular rule, we replace every occurrence of S in the controller transfer function with Z minus 1 over Tz. This corresponds to the mapping Z equal to 1 over 1 minus ST, and the imaginary axis is mapped to z equal to 1 over 1 minus j omega t. It can be shown that this corresponds to a circle with a radius of a half centered at z equal to a half, with the stable region of the s-plane mapped to the interior of the circle. Stable poles in the s-plane will now always be mapped to stable poles in the z-plane, but only a small portion of the stable region of the z-plane will be used. When using the bilinear transform for discretization, we replace every occurrence of S in the controller transfer function with 2 over T times Z minus 1 divided by Z plus 1, which results in the mapping Z equal to 1 plus T over 2 times S divided by 1 minus T over 2 times S. The imaginary axis is mapped to the Z plane using this equation, which can be shown to correspond to the unit circle with the stable region of the S-plane mapped to the inside of the unit circle. Stable poles in the S-plane will now always be mapped to stable poles in the Z-plane and unstable poles will always be mapped to unstable poles. However, note that although this mapping might appear the same as that of the impulse invariant discretization we considered in a previous video, it is in fact different with the differences becoming more significant as the distance of the pole being mapped from the origin of the S-plane increases.